when you build uh, Angular, is perfect for building applications. And uh, when you route in application, you don't have the concept of uh, one page, one URL thing like you have on the website. It is more of a view of a function which uh, you are working on. It can be a product information or uh, uh, sign up or things like that. But since it is a web application, it is very easy to like combine those two or make those equal. And uh, routing in an application can look something like this. This is from the uh, Angular route uh, documentation <laughs> where you specify that when someone surfs to the URL uh, <coughs> slash phones, you should uh, use this template and this controller and uh, create the page and put in the logic and uh, data and so on. And uh, if you already have a phone, you specify slash phone slash phone ID and you will get this template with this controller. That's how you tell your Angular application uh, which template to use, which controller to use, depending on the URL uh, that you, uh, your uh, user are, is routing to. And also, if you want to show the detail of a phone, the URL in the browser will change cor uh, correspondingly to that. Nothing strange here? Everyone understands the logic behind this? And the otherwise is that if you go to a URL on your application that is not handled here, you will uh, be redirected to the main one. <coughs> now, routing in websites, if you use Angular for creating a website, it is a little bit different because you usually have a CMS of some kind where you have content. And most of the content, if not say all the content, has unique URLs. And uh, to create uh, an application or a single page website with uh, Angular, you have to like, rethink all the logic. You could have what we saw on the previous one with um, like slash page slash something, and then you show the page. Then all the content uh, would be uh, displayed with one template for your uh, page for your website. <coughs> and uh, when people start using uh, Angular to more than just web applications, they realize that they need a little bit more flexible uh, routing system than the default one, ng-route. So UI router was uh, created, uh, which is on GitHub. How many have used UI router? Two, three? Okay, how many use <coughs> ng-route today? <coughs> and uh, you, three, four there. How many have used the new one? One. Okay, you who haven't raised your hand and do the Angular development, how do you solve your routing? Anyone? I raised my hand twice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't see as many hands as... Uh, so Okay, do you use, does anyone use any other uh, routing uh, uh, component? No? Okay. So, UI router was created to extend the default one or add what it was uh, lacking of uh, in the beginning. And uh, Angular new router is a backport from the router that will be in Angular 2. It was supposed to be in Angular already, but if I recall it right, it will be released in 1.5. Angular 1.5. Correct me if I'm not, uh, if I'm wrong. <coughs> so, and today I will focus on UI router because that's the one I have most experience with. And I will tell you how uh, uh, we have been using it in uh, projects, especially larger websites where we have built them with uh, Angular as a single page application. And we have uh, Drupal CMS, Drupal 8, in the back, back end, which provides the content with REST APIs. And then we route it and have logic in the front end to 
uh, add, beside content, showing content from CMS, we have a lot of logic also inside uh, uh, the website. It is still a website, but functions as a web application. The main reason to do that is to speed up, to have a great speed, and uh, also because we got free hands to choose whatever technology we could to make the new website. So we decided to go for Angular, and uh, we haven't regretted it yet. So we have um, the ng route, what we saw before, how you can route. And uh, if we create a state in a, in a UI router, we create states. Uh, when you, so they are called uh, states, you give them a name, and then you have the URL. That's the when thing in the ng, ng router. And uh, you have the template. That's more or less the same. And uh, in here, I use often control, uh, besides uh, defining the controller, I also use the controller as syntax. So I av avoid scope, usage of scope as much as I can. Because in the beginning when I was learning uh, Angular, I got a lot of problems debugging uh, with inheritance and uh, things like that. Today, I don't have big problem with scopes. Uh, so I I use it now and then when I think it uh, fits. But most of the time, I use the syntax controller as. So I, in my template, I can use ctrl dot something to access uh, variables or functions that I have defined on my controller. So then that is uh, a private scope in the Yes. So I can have multiple controllers, and uh, that, that's my. Uh, so if you uh, so this variable is defined on the private scope or the, uh, on on the scope. If you don't uh, if you don't make it private, it will still behave as a normal scope. So the scope is still there, but uh, it automatically uh, defines CTRL as your main controller component. And uh, a route in a uh, new router would look something like this. You define your uh, controller, and then uh, you set the uh, routing uh, config with path and component. And you can do uh, what I have understand, and this is understand because I haven't used the new router, I have read and seen, is that it has uh, more or less the same functionality as UI router uh, with some other syntax because Angular 2 is written in uh, TypeScript, so you can uh, use TypeScript and so on, and it's uh, uh, better componentized and so on. So you, the functionality that I will describe with UI router, it should be possible to use it in the new router, but it will have a little bit different uh, syntax. And that's one of the reasons it still is not pushed to uh, Angular 1 uh, because they have changed syntax for some things uh, a few times. Now I see an uh, uh, error in my presentation. It should say UI router on the top, so you have to have an automatic search replace here. So. This is a state uh, defined uh, with UI router, uh, the similar to one we had before with some extra attributes. And uh, the strength in UI router is that you can extend it and you can add uh, uh, logic and uh, things uh, on that on your states. Like we have um, something called uh, abstract, which, um, Okay, let's see. Yeah, yeah. We have something called restricted here. And that's something we have implemented that every time you change a uh, state, we listen on uh, our event and we check if that state is restricted. We check if the user is authenticated. If not, we redirect the user to, uh, to a login uh, state to get the user to log in before he can access uh, this state. That's how we use the variable restricted. Uh, 
the variable abstract is that one of the features in UI router is that you can have siblings states. So you have one state here, which is your parent, and then you have siblings, which like this one is evaluated first, and then you put in next state in that. And defining by abstract is that you can't uh, browse to this URL, the, uh, to this state. It will uh, give you an error. You should, from this state, you should be uh, redirected somewhere else. And uh, I see we don't have it uh, here, but um, we have also used a variable like redirect to, so we can define if you're on this state, uh, which is an abstract state or dummy state, go here all the time. <coughs> so, but it is useful, and we will, uh, I will come back later to why it's uh, useful. URL, like before, you can define variables and uh, in your um, URLs. Uh, and uh, there are some different syntax, colon or uh, angle bracks. Here we have defined that the first variable is local. It's the language code. So that means that we uh, start that our uh, main uh, state has to have a language uh, code. So we have already that if when the browser comes to the slash, we have uh, some logic to choose which language and redirect it to a main state with uh, that language. And then the language code is saved in local and your controller can access it and so on, if you need that logic. <coughs> we have some other attributes, which is just to show you that you can have defined and add and extend as you, uh, as you want. If we go to the sibling, here we see that um, our state has an attribute called uh, parent. And uh, parent main, the one we defined before, it has a URL start. And we have something called views, which is uh, a way to, you can have multiple views uh, in, in your template and push in different templates, different controllers in different parts of your template. The URL thing, uh, when you have a parent, the URL will be automatically converted, or the URL part will be added to the parent's URL. So instead of writing local variable on each URL, I can, by having an app parent, automatically build up my uh, URLs this way. And if you see the parent attribute is gone here and I renamed the sibling state to main.home uh, and UI state checks if you have a dot name here, the first part is the parent and it will try to find that parent and uh, use it as a parent. So you can uh, make it cleaner in your state definition. But you can also define parent here with some other parent if you don't want the main, but then you should have the main dot home name anyway. So here we have uh, some more views, uh, which is, uh, we have the normal template. It doesn't have any name. So if you have a, uh, the default view doesn't have any name. And if you name your uh, templates, uh, your uh, views, alert message, and at main means that it should, uh, it should be defined in the main state. The template that comes from the main state defines where this UI view is in. And in that one, I want to put in this template. And you here see, this is a template. So we have just have a string, which is a directive we have. And uh, here we have a URL to our external HTML. So you can put in both. Mm, two. Okay. Does, does it make sense? How do you tell where the, where the, <coughs> where the views go in the main? Yeah, I want to show that, but I see it's not on the next slide. Uh, so. I hope it will come later, <laughs> I'll find it. I don't know where it is right now. 
So uh, that's how you define states. And when uh, you have defined your state, you also have some extra things, events. Are, uh, few, these three events are very important ones, especially we use the change start when we want to listen for, let's say, if, it, if users logged in, or uh, when it comes to the first page, if, uh, if it's uh, wrong, la like which language, and uh, should the change success. When we already changed, if you want to do something, then load some data or clean up some old data or whatever is a good place to do it. But otherwise, I try to avoid events as much as possible. I try to define my states and so on. So it is a flow. So it's not like a flow, and then comes the event, and then, oh, then it goes down there. And change error if you want to handle, like, if the user couldn't, the sta state couldn't be uh, evaluated, then uh, do something. Parameters, uh, like we showed before, you can define variables in your URL, and that will be evaluated and uh, as a variable that you can parameter that you can use in your controller to fetch, in this case, uh, product details for a specific product, uh, and so on. Here we have. Uh, no, we don't have. Uh, this is uh, how you link in UI router. And uh, you see that we use something uh, UIS ref, where we have the state name. And it just looks like a call, function call, where we provide the parameter that that state needs. And that will automatically be evaluated by UI router, and the href will be generated from uh, from this URL. So in the href, if you do inspect, you will see product slash the ID that the product has. You can also, you also have a, a directive that's called uisref active, which sets this class active if you are on uh, on that uh, uh, UI that you have specified here. So uh, it's the same like using ng class equals, and then you have active if this is uh, this is true. But this is automatically done by a UI route. So. Multilingual URLs. How many have tried to make a uh, web app or uh, Angular web solution with multilingual URLs? One, two, okay. Did you succeed? Yes. Was it hard? No. Well. Oh. Hard, hard, but hard hard. complex. One thing is that you have your states, you define your states, and uh, the first thing, you, like if you translate URLs, you would like more or less start copying all your states and create different URLs. Uh, or at least you will have many URLs that you need to uh, handle uh, depending on, uh, on uh, this, uh, how many languages you have or how many states and URLs. In a UI router, I've been uh, using something that's called Angular UI Router IATN. What it is, is is a URL matcher. So it matches, uh, uh, instead of just providing one URL string, you can provide an object with language code and the URL, language code and URL, and so on. And it will compile uh, those URLs and then match all those URLs for this state, and uh, you can uh, use that, uh, the same logic like you had before in, the, in definition and so on, which is uh, really, really handy. It it's doesn't have any release and so on. It's on GitHub, been there for a while. So it has few flaws that we hit on and so on, but otherwise it's been 
a better way to handle multilingual than we otherwise would have had. And what solution did you use? No, I Okay. So like you say, because, and one of the reasons we want to have translated URLs is because of uh, uh, search engine optimization. We want the website to be high up, even if it's an angular app. And then we have to translate all the URLs. And the content, if it's uh, generated in Swedish, it will have a Swedish URL, and in uh, English, English URL, and so on. Uh, from uh, Drupal. Drupal generates URLs uh, like any CMS from the title, removes the unnecessary words and converts everything to ask at a chart. So this is the way we have done and uh, it um, works well. We haven't hit any performance issues or anything yet. We'll see when we go live. Uh, but the thing is that since its application all runs on the cli uh, client side. So it's not like it has to handle many things at the same time. It is on the client side and so on. And most phones can handle it and so on. The biggest problem we have uh, today is the animations to do fancy things uh, on the, and it's just pure HTML, CSS. That's the biggest performance issues we have when we try to like make it perfect on all uh, the mobile devices. Then it's always some CSS thing that's problem. Otherwise, the speed of Angular app is really, really nice. And uh, is, does the controller know uh, which language it is? Yeah, it has this variable. So I can use it. Uh, in this case, customer service, what I do here, I fetch FAQs for that language and show them in my template. And uh, what we have also done since we use Drupal is that we have defined, uh, so we have made so the front end and the uh, CMS has one-to-one -one matching in URLs. So almost all pages which have a corresponding content uh, in CMS have the same URL. So when we fetch content from uh, CMS, we don't have to do any magic. We just take the loca uh, URL path we have and tell Drupal, give me this page. And uh, it makes it very, very easy. So even with translated URLs, it makes it very, very easy. So that if you want to know what local you have, there's a function called, uh, is it route params or something? Yes, so uh, route params, it is for ng route, state params for UI router, and I don't know what is in new router. So, so the events you saw before, there were state change start. In uh, ng route, it's route change start for the same type of event. And on the website, we also have catch them all state, which is defined at the bottom. So like if you happen to link to a page in the CMS, uh, from the CMS in internal links that is not defined to any specific state, we have a default state which shows the page nicely to the user and, <coughs> and generate and catch them. That way, at least all the links that are uh, generated uh, and have a corresponding content will render uh, properly. But in this case, the menu may not be properly selected which part of the menu is active or not because the URL didn't, wasn't ca caught by the other states that we have. <coughs> and I see I don't have the HTML part uh, the slide must be gone anywhere, uh, somewhere. I will uh, try, try to find it. <coughs> so, um, any questions? So, if you add a new language on this, uh, this site, then you have to then have a developer go beyond and put up all the logs. Yes. All right. As it is, uh, as it is defined now. Yes. 
value then in, in this uh, way to use Angular in this case? Um, uh, speed uh, for the user experience. And uh, as a developer, we had to choose whatever we wanted to create the best application. And besides it being a website, it, it the, in this case, we also have a page where you can administrate your account, where you have credit card and a lot of other things, which is not connected to the CMS at all. It is, it is a application part. And then we have another application. Uh, so we have two, three parts of the website which are pure applications. And uh, those drew that, okay, let's try to make the whole website uh, as, a, as a single page application. Just uh, with reference to his question, it, it was just a JSON object, right? JSON object? The URL uh, language uh, yeah. object. Uh, no, it was uh, Angular code. <coughs> this is a part of your state definition. It's an object, so if yeah, it is just an object. Yeah, you can, uh, like, uh, yeah, you can uh, provide that information uh, in some other ways. And like I said, it, the uh, ITN URL matcher has some flaws, and we have tried to figure out because. Beside having languages, we also have on this site two sections, private and business, with all the same states and all the same languages. So it, beside having languages times URLs, we would have times two because we have two states. So we were trying to figure out how we can extend it. But uh, due time constraints, we just copy-pasted and uh, uh, added uh, new URLs uh, for the business part. So we de redefined the states twice right now, but you maintain we want to avoid that. So we will probably rewrite the URL ma matcher later. Uh, the restricted property that you were showing yeah. was back, is that something you guys built yourself? Or did you find it uh, uh, I think we built it ourselves, but probably inspired from some, some other, if you Google for uh, route, uh, Angular route and uh, login restriction or user restriction, you will find examples. And I think the UI route are examples. So you could do it with ng router too, but you would do it deeper in the controller, but you want to avoid yeah. to uh, in instantiate your controller and so on. And we are like me and the other developer, main developer, We've been really like performance fanatic. Anything that's unnecessary, we, we want to avoid. And also, the thing with uh, views that I showed, we are, have been really, really restricted with this one. Uh, not because of performance, because of the overview of how is things uh, connected and who is putting in the alert message on this uh, state and so on. We wanted to have it streamlined so it's really easy to look in your code and understand what is happening, who is filling out the values and so on. But in some cases, we figure out that this was the best and quickest way to do to make it work nicely on mobile and uh, so on uh, because of the markup language. Otherwise, we would like uh, have to have double uh, uh, versions, one visible on the mobile, one visible on the desktop, and so on. So you don't use Resolve? Uh, no, we have avoided that. I tried it, and I couldn't make it work, so I realized that's one of the reasons you should avoid it too. <laughs> no, but uh, there are a few cases where it would be good, but we have always figured out that uh, there is really no, we don't have to use that function, especially if that resolve can take time. Uh, that was one of the main reasons. Okay, can we resolve it later? So the user doesn't notice is one of the uh, things.
if you're good at Angular, looking for work, contact Richard there. <laughs> yeah, uh, the catch all thing. Yes. Yeah, so if, you, if <coughs> some browser browse to a URL that doesn't uh, exist in the CMS, the CMS will return a 404 and we handle it and show something for the user. So what if someone goes there after the fact that they've landed on your page and they came to a successful URL? Uh, uh, you round trips to your CMS on every state change? Or? No, if we have fetched the page once, we don't go and fetch it again. Yeah, no. from that, then, uh, then we will just show a 404 information or something like that. You are, you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the user is already, has already generated, uh, loaded and uh, in, uh, has the app running. So whatever linking there is done through UI states. And uh, so navigation on top is not re-rendered and the footer is not re-rendered. Uh, so we, like it's just the main content and if that one doesn't exist we show something that helps the user we still haven't defined what if it's going to be a search result or whatever we're going to do any more questions no i will uh, upload uh, this to slideshare and if you want to contact me you can find me on Twitter or email or Google me. So, that's all. Mm -hmm.